Hi, welcome to Wealthy Mindset. My name is Oliver. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Fisker stock starting from May 10th trading day, covering the next couple trading days and weeks. I'm going to analyze the graph to give you lows and highs, essentially price target predictions. Now, quick disclaimer before I begin. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a professional. And everything I do share with you is just my opinion. It is not advice. So please do not buy or sell based off the information I give you or the opinions I do form. Please do your own due diligence and research before buying and selling. Now looking at the graph, we close at $11.28 as of May 7th, 2021. Been in pretty rough, rough shape for the most part. Had a downward trend resistance line right here since March 2021, March 2nd to be specific, and been just getting knocked down the whole entire time. Broke through it and then was doing pretty well, but then got knocked down as well in terms of a downward trend, new downward trend resistance line. Now, what I mean by support and resistance, by the way, in case you're new to the channel, you can see right here, so this middle red support level, that is a resistance level as well, came down, just to visually show, came down, bounced off support, went up to the upside, and then did that a bunch of times as well, did that here as well, bounced off the support, went up to the upside. Now, support levels could act as resistance and vice versa, resistance levels could act as support. As we see right here, this support level, multiple times support, act as resistance as well, right here, got went up to the upside, got knocked down, came back down, and then went up to the upside, got knocked down, came back down, or got knocked back down from hitting it, so if that makes sense. Now, the issue is, when we got knocked down by another resistance level, we pretty much got like destroyed and went through all these support levels right here. These were pretty major support levels. I was hoping that they would hold. Unfortunately, they did not hold, and now, technically, we'll have a small bounce up, I think, I don't think it's gonna be major. There is potential it could be major to the upside. So if we do go to the upside, I'm gonna cover the downside as well, but I'm gonna just cover the upside first. So if we go to the upside, MAC line is in the positive for the three month chart. And by the charts, I mean like three months, one month, five year chart. It just depends on how much it's compressed. So the, the closer you go to like a one day chart, five day chart, the less compressed it is. But right now it's a three month chart, MAC line, is in the positive. This MACD line is like the average movement. So if it's bearish or bu uh, bullish, right now it is in the positive, it is bullish, it is optimistic. So it could be going to the upside, which I'm anticipating it will, but I think it will be knocked down by this um, support level, resistance level, which will act as resistance first. And right now, if we go to the upside, we might get knocked down at 1196 based off this moving average right here. And then we'll probably get knocked down by the low $12 price point, maybe even $12.13 as we've seen back here before. So around that price point. Now, if it passes $12.13, then we could be in good shape. There will be more resistance levels between these levels right here, between this support level and resistance level right here. But ultimately, you want to pass $12.92, essentially hit $13. But that coincides with this moving average right here at the 12 12.95 as well, depending on when you meet it, because these moving averages obviously move, depending on how we move up and down given through the trading days. Now, this resistance level will act as resistance as well, downward trend resistance level by the time we meet it, depending on when we meet it. So if we meet it relatively quick, we'll have issues at like 12.66, plus or minus a couple cents around that range. And then if we meet it later on, it could act as a double negative, right? Like So for example, Let's say if we meet it right about here on May 12th, right? Right now it's May 10th. And if we meet it on May 12th, we'll have issues passing the $12 price point anyway, and we'll get knocked down by the downward trend resistance line plus the horizontal resistance line. That's the unfortunate part. Now to cover the upside a little bit more before I cover the downside, after we pass the $13 price point, like I mentioned, then we need to pass the $13.50, give or take, plus or minus a couple cents and then pass this moving average right here as well, around the 1377, give or take a couple cents or a few like 10 cents here and there. Now, the problem is it looks like the market wants to see revenue until the ocean vehicle comes out, that's when we'll see revenue because this downward trend resistance line is technically acting out of nature a little bit. Yes, the market could have dragged it down as well because there was a couple down days in terms of the market, relatively strong down days. But what I mean by acting out of nature is this downward trend resistance line, even though it had a nice bounce to the upside, it was getting knocked down quite a bit where this downward trend resistance line went up to the upside, it consolidated, consolidated, went the downward trend resistance line right here, instead of consolidating, went up to the upside completely, 
So, and then there was a bunch of them where it's just like, there was more downsides and then it was just either consolidating or went up to the upside. Yes, it went to the downside after some time, but this one was relatively quick. It was shorter than this time frame right here. Now, if it goes to the downside, how low will, will we go? Technically, it could it's gonna bounce up a little bit at the time being, but I think it's probably gonna hit these two levels for the most part. The first level is the 1030 range. I can see it going down to 1030 based off this time frame right here and this time frame right here, where it went down to 1030 a little bit, and specifically this price point. So right here, it went at the 1080 price point and then it went up, but then it came back down to the 1030 price point. But then if you think it's gonna go just pretty much just start like breaking down just like it did right here, then essentially there is support at the $9 price point I guess around the like the high nine dollars, nine dollars eight cents, nine seven, and all that stuff, nine dollars and seventy cents. Sorry about that. But ultimately, it would probably go trickle down to like right here. I would say because this bounced off, we could see another bounce off right here, just like we like like we saw right here. But we could see it here again around the high eight dollar price point, so eight ninety range, give or take. Now I'll elaborate more on that. Unfortunately, I haven't done a deep dive. If it goes lower than that, I'm anticipating that hopefully $10.30 would hold. But actually, given that, I'm just thinking about it right now, it's probably gonna trickle down to $8 because, because of the revenue. Because we, you would have to have something to reverse it to the upside. And given the resistance and all that stuff, revenue is probably gonna play a role massively. So it might, it will bounce at the $10.30. I'm anticipating it will bounce on 10, 10 30 but the problem is it's probably gonna get knocked down by the resistance levels and all that stuff. So it depends, it has to be assessed a little bit, but I wouldn't be shocked if it does trickle down to 890 range over time, over time. It won't be quick, I think, hopefully not, but over time. Now, in terms of shorted positions, I just wanna cover it for Fisker stock. It's not extremely shorted yet, but it's getting close. So as of April 15th, 2021, public knowledge in terms of shorted positions for floated shares, is 16.58%. That's quite a bit. Now, to be considered extreme shorted, it has to be past 20%, but it is pretty massive. Now, outstanding shares is at $8.86, but outstanding shares includes restricted shares. That's the difference between floated and uh, floated shares and outstanding shares. So floated shares does not include restricted shares. Outstanding shares does include restricted shares. I'm more consider, consider, uh, concerned about this and once this passes 20%, it's considered extremely shorted. And I think that's the reason why we've been seeing this massive dip for quite a while. Now, before that though, it was at 15%. So I don't know if they're going back and forth and just doing it at the right time. Okay, so that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, appreciate it. If you did like the video, consider dropping a like. It does help with the channel. Thank you for that, appreciate it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And if you like videos like this or other stock videos or other financial videos that I'll be posting in the future, consider subscribing so be notified when I do upload those videos. And that's basically it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.